Hey everyone, in front of me here I have the Angway Engine Pro. Uh, so far I really like this little bike. It's uh, a good runner, but I do want to make some changes to it. Here's some of the parts that are going on the bike today. Got a set of air forks for it. Um, I've got a rear shock. I'm not sure which one of these shocks I'm going to use yet. This is a rock shock. Um, really tiny little shock. I think it may be the smallest one rock shock makes. Um, gearing change. Gonna put some bars, grips, some luggage, and you gotta do the flat out in the in the tubes. Um, there's just no way around it. So uh, that's a quick look at what's going on this bike. Once all these parts are on, it should really transform the bike into a very smooth commuter and uh, just make it a more fun bike to ride. At 190 pounds, I can just barely move the rear suspension of this bike. That's bouncing it with pretty much my full weight and that's all the travel I get out of it. So I know that people that are 170 pounds or less, um, this is essentially a rigid bike. The shock spring is just way, way too heavy. The shock on the bike here has a 1000 pound spring in it, which I think is just uh, too heavy for the geometry of the rear suspension here. So. We're going to replace that with a shock that has either a 500 or a 650 pound spring and will be a little bit adjustable as well. So we can we can adjust the preload on that and uh, raise those numbers if we have to. I can't go into too much detail or this video would be two hours long. So if you have specific questions that I don't cover, um, post them in the comments and I'll try to answer uh, whatever questions you may have. So we're going to start out by removing the two bolts actually before i even go into that um i've got this bike on my motorcycle stand and i've got this crank down stand here below onto uh, the support and that way i am lifting this rear wheel just slightly off of the ground and that takes the pressure off of this so i can remove the bolts easily so i'm uh, going to start out by removing these and uh, you'll need number five Allens. Um, one comes with your kit, I believe. And the other one, I like these ratchety ones because they're you can get more uh, torque on them. So okay, the bolts are out. And now you just simply remove the shock there. You've got these two big spacers on the top and two smaller spacers on the bottom here. And uh, we'll probably be reusing those again with whatever shock we choose. So I'm going to go pick out one that I would like to put on here and we'll see if it's going to fit. First off, I'm going to try the rock shocks here because I'd, I'd prefer to have this shock on the bike uh, versus the other. It's just a, a much better quality shock. Um, I'm going to have not links for parts or anything, but I am going to list parts and Part numbers if I have them, um, definitely make and model of each part in the description below. So look through that. Um, I'm not going to have links because half the time when I put in links, when people go to use them, they've been uh, the discontinued or they're no longer available, that kind of thing. So you're going to have to find all these parts on your own, but I'm going to give you the uh, manufacturer and the model for each item that I'm putting on here. One thing that you'll notice right away is that the rock shock shock is one half inch longer um, center to center in the holes versus the stock. I'll take a measurement here before I disassemble this and we'll see uh, how high the bike is versus what the final height is. Generally these are a pressed in fitting. Sometimes they're only finger tight and they rotate but often they're they're very hard to get out of there and this one seems to be pressed in so what i'm going to do is use a heat gun here i'll warm up this area of the shock and they should come out of there much easier these came out of the shock easy enough if you use pliers um, use something like this that doesn't have teeth so that you don't knurl up these um, you can always use a, a standard set of channel locks like this that does have teeth, but wrap the jaws with tape so that you're not screwing up the look of your pieces and 
chewing them all up. These have installed nicely on the rock shocks. Um, just use a, a plastic mallet to tap them in and those are good to go. The bottom here, um, I'm going to leave this stock piece on there. looks like it's the right size and right width as well. So you'll need to uh, check that and make sure that your widths are the same as what uh, you're taking out of there. Now we just re reinstall this. That width is good. We're going to be fine there. And I do see that the added length, uh, we're going to need to make a slight modification here at the top of the shock to the frame itself. It appears to me that I'm going to need to make a slight modification to this uh, gusset that's right here on the lower part of the frame. Um, you've got your wires and your uh, brake line, which tuck up under here. And they actually tuck way up into a pocket that's there. So they'll be well out of the way once we do the install. Um, but be careful of those wires. Be careful of your brake line. And uh, I think I'm going to need to trim this gusset back just a hair right there for clearance. Okay, right there. Should be enough. And yeah, as I suspected, we're going to have to trim this back just a hair. So I'm going to use a die grinder on this and do it quickly and easily. So I undid one of the zip ties right here. I pulled this brake line up. I've got it wired up above out of the way. And I just tucked a rag in here, um, pulling all these wires down. Don't pull on them hard, but um, get your wire bundle here away from this area. That's what we're going to trim. And All right, so that's all I'm looking for is just a little bit of a notch out of there. Um, I did that with the die grinder and then I went back in with the Dremel here and smoothed everything. You don't want to leave any sharp edges anywhere. Everything needs to be smooth and uh, nice radius corners there. Here we are on the other side and this is just the little rounded notch that we put in there. There's the shock on the bike. Everything's bolted together. I did use thread lock on the bolts when putting them back together. Use some blue Loctite. And let's see what the bottom bracket height is now. So it's right at 13 inches. For, so we gained just the half inch that was actually the shock length um, as far as height of the rear of the bike. This Rock Shocks has a 500 pound spring on it. Uh, let's see how that works. Oh, that's way better. I actually got some suspension now and the dampening on it's pretty nice. What's nice about this shock as well is that I've got an adjusting ring down here on the bottom. If I tighten this nut up, it's going to add preload to the spring and we're going to get a stiffer ride. But right now, that seems a whole lot better than what we had. So while I've got the bike in this position on my motorcycle stand, I'm going to go ahead and just lift up the rear wheel, remove the rear wheel. We're going to do the gear change and put in the flat out. So there are all sorts of ways to pull off your rear wheel. You can lay the bike over on its left side. You can turn it upside down. If you've got somebody to help you, uh, you can have them hold the rear wheel up. You can use a bike stand. Um, multiple ways, but you just got to get the wheel, uh, rear wheel up in the air somehow. The rear wheel is off the bike. Um, it's right here. You're going to need to take off all the washers, nuts, uh, little plastic pieces, uh, the derailleur guard, all of those things off of the drive side here so that you can get your tool down in here to unlock the uh, freewheel. The nut on the drive side was, was pretty tough to get off. Um, I had to keep working it back and forth. If you find a, a nut uh, anywhere on a bike that is just resisting turning, um, work it back and forth, tighten it, loosen it, tighten it, loosen it, and use some sort of uh, lubricant on it. 
if you keep just cranking on it uh, until you can't turn it anymore, then you're in a bad spot. So keep it moving, work it back and forth until it comes off. Um, had to take everything off of the drive side axle. So if you need to get out your phone, take a picture of how things go together. Uh, there are a few little spacers and and the derailleur guard and that kind of thing. So keep track of what order those go in. That's important. And uh, now we can drop the uh, tool on that's going to pull off our freewheel here. And this just goes on over. Some of these, um, I've bought some of these in the past that are for regular bicycles. And the hole in the center here won't be big enough for an e-bike axle. So like this one, I ended up having to actually grind that one out to make it bigger because it's the only one that I could find at the time. Um, still working fine, but now it is big enough to actually go over the axle and drop into place. And these are normal threads, so you're going to stand this up and it's going to go counterclockwise to unscrew. The longer that your bike has been ridden, um, the more that this will be tightened up onto the hub itself. So if it's been a year or two, these can be pretty tight. Since this is relatively a new bike, I'm thinking that it's not going to be too bad. And it wasn't. That was it. So, so once it unthreads, this is what you'll find on the bottom. You've got threads on the hub here. And I do see that they've been greased, so that's good. That was correct. Made it come off a lot easier. Um, if your threads are real dry, um, put some oil on them before you put everything back together. Um, it'll make it much easier to disassemble next time. So that's the stock unit. Put that over here. And this is what we're replacing it with. You can buy any number of manufacturers of Shimano compatible uh, freewheels here. Uh, the stock one here was a 1328, the smallest. Um, your high gear was a 13. This new one is 1132. So it's a smaller um, high speed gear, which means that we're, we're going to get more top end out of it. And it's got a larger... Uh, low gear here which means it's going to be easier to pedal up hills i'm going to give this a shot of white lithium grease here that gets into the thread that'll make it a whole lot easier to thread on and to uh, get off later and then it's just simply putting this on here flat and then you can just spin it into place like that this freewheel will tighten up as you pedal so there's no real need to try to tighten it up with a tool it'll do that uh, as you ride the next thing that's just so necessary with any e-bike is to put flat out in the tubes um, you will not get any flats if you have this stuff in it it's really amazing stuff. I've put thousands of miles on fat tire e-bikes without having a single flat once I have this in. So uh, grab some of that. It's usually, I want to say it's about $20 for one of those 36 ounce. Um, you can find them on eBay, on Amazon. On the side of the bag here is a number of ounces. And on the back, it tells you how many ounces to put in for specific tire sizes and vehicles. Screw your valve stem back in and you can air up your tire. Before you put your wheel back on, take some brake cleaner, spray it on a clean paper towel or rag and wipe off your rotor because chances are you got a little bit of oil or grease or something on there, even if you just touched it with your hands. Uh, that can be enough to contaminate your brake pads. The rear wheel is back on the bike. We'll come back to this a little bit later. I'll do a derailleur adjustment. Um, probably going to need it for the larger diameter, low gear. 
But for now, we're just going to come around and remove the front fender, front wheel, headlight, and start uh, getting ready to pull this fork off. I chose the Bucklose Trekking Forks. These are a, an adjustable air fork. On the right side here, you've got uh, compression adjustments as well as a lockout. You've got air over on this side. Um, I've used these forks on other bikes and they're surprisingly good. I've had really good luck with them. I like their adjustability. They're smooth, smooth ride and I have not yet had any sort of failure with them. They hold up really well. They're, they're not made for uh, downhilling or jumping or any of that stuff, but neither is this bike, so that won't be an issue. Um, nice forks here. These compared to the stock forks, um, here you can see the amount of travel, and the stock forks measure at right at 60 millimeters of travel. Um, my issue with these forks is they're actually pretty soft. Um, the bike comes to you with a pretty soft front end and a really rigid rear end, which is uh, you know, kind of a weird combination. So these forks are gonna be so much more adjustable and such a smoother ride. With the 140 millimeters of travel that these forks have, uh, we're gonna have a much smoother ride and it's just much better suspension that is adjustable. I've got a straight edge across here. The new fork is about one inch longer than the old fork. Uh, remember that we raised the rear of the bike by a half inch. So that brings this within a half inch of the original fork. And that's gonna be perfectly fine. If anything else, it'll add some stability at higher speeds. So we're good to go there. Now I've just gotta get this race off of the older one and I'll show you how I do that. It's just uh, simple tools that I have here, nothing special. This bearing race here is what we need to remove and put on the new fork. And there isn't a gap behind it. It's pressed right up tight against the, the base of this. So what you have to do is create a little bit of a gap and then you can work uh, flat bladed screwdrivers in there and very carefully pry it off. Or you can buy the correct tool for this. It's about $40. Um, but you, if you just take your time, you'll be able to do it uh, with just a screwdriver, a wood chisel, which is what we're going to use to get behind there, and uh, just a light hammer, and we'll be able to tap that off. So I'm going to start out by, as with all things that need to move, I'm going to put apply some heat to it. I'm going to put the heat gun on here and get this bearing race pretty warm. The old steering stem length here measured at 18 centimeters. I'm actually gonna go 19 centimeters, which is gonna put me right up to this mark here. So I'm gonna put that mark on there. Um, one of the easiest ways to keep your cut straight and stop you from wandering offline when you're cutting a tube is to Use a piece of masking tape. Just wrap that around. Make sure that your ends meet up correctly. And if they do, then you should have a nice straight spot. So I'm gonna cut right around there. That'll keep me relatively straight. And then we'll do a little bit of filing and this will be ready to go on the bike. Okay, now I'm just going to file the end here completely smooth and then put a little bit of a bevel on here so that pieces go together easily. In the end of your stir tube here, 
of your original fork, you have a threaded insert that your top cap bolts down to. Your new fork won't have that. It'll just be straight on through. So we need to take that out of the old fork. Um, to do that, don't try to pull it out top wise. You just want to put a long bolt, something that you can hold on to um, that's at least the length of the steering tube. And we're going to drive this actually down and out the bottom. So tap that insert back in and then put on your top cap and tighten this up a bit and it'll reseat that. The front forks are on now. All I need to do is reassemble the front wheel, brake calipers, front fender, that kind of thing. Here's the finished suspension on the Engine Pro, and it's going to be quite an improvement over what I had stock. So we've got the Bucklose forks on the front, the rock shocks on the back, and I really like the way the bike is looking and sitting. The next step is replacing these bars. A lot of people you put on a regular stem down here, get rid of this riser altogether put on a regular stem and use uh, BMX bars. I really like that look actually, and I considered it for this, but I'd really like to keep the uh, foldability of the bike and you kind of lose that if you go with a normal stem and bars. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just replace the bars with something a little lower and different and uh, keep this riser here. so. That The bars I'm going to put on today are these Clubman bars. They're for vintage motorcycles. Um, they are a 7 8 inch size bar. The, the stock bar is 7 8 as well, but it goes up to a 1 inch here where it mounts on the stem. So these bars are 7 8 all the way through. So you need to install these adapters here. So those go on over the bar and that brings this diameter up to what we've got here. So these are called 7 8 to 1 inch bar adapters. Uh, you can get them on eBay, Amazon, all that. Sometimes they're knurled. Uh, these are just flat and they'll be fine. Nothing will slip. So um, I'm excited to get these bars on because it's going to lower that real tall stem by a fair amount. And I think it'll just be kind of a cool look. We'll see. Maybe I'll hate it. I don't know. We'll find out. I put the screen mounts onto uh, the bars here because I think it'll be easier with those off. And I'll slide all the controls on and set the bars in place. So I'm getting pretty close to done for the day here. 
We got the gearing, we got the rear shock, we've got the clubman bars on here, which I really like the look of. I thought I would, and uh, it, it just lowers the whole profile, makes it look much more like a some sort of uh, racer, like a vintage racer. Um, bars are slightly wider than stock, but everything will fit on them nicely. Uh, the one thing that I would like to add are a couple of bar end mirrors. So if I had my mirrors sticking off the end here, that would be a, a great cafe look there. So I like those bars. Um, the next thing is I bought this canine backpack deal. So it's, it's actually four dogs, but the way it straps, I really liked the, the idea of just clipping this around the frame and then adding the bags to it. So let's see if that works. So I pre-adjusted these straps so that they will stay and hold everything in place here. I've got these pretty tight, so they're kind of hard to get on there. Okay, that worked well. Okay, so that holds your uh, backbone of the pack system. I just gotta find the bags. I have lost the bags. These bags, um, which expand, actually hold quite a bit of stuff. And then they just clip on to this. I can see in this lighting that all this piping on here is uh, reflective too, which isn't a bad thing. Good. So we've got some bags on the front. Almost looks like a little gas tanks. That's pretty cool. And now it's even looking more like a little mini motorcycle. Those look like gas tanks up here. That's kind of cool. Uh, I've, I've got one of those bottle holders on here. I'll unclip this and show you. But these are just Velcro with a, a rubber piece on the inside. So you can stick them on any tube and they kind of, they'll form to pretty much the shape of any tube. Um, but you just stick these on. Uh, I can't really do this one handed, but, and then they just Velcro in place. So nice place to have a bottle. Um, I think it's going to be a, a really cool little commuter type bike. So. It's looking pretty cool. I'm liking these bars on it. I think those are real nice. Here from the cockpit, you've got this look, which is pretty cool. Very vintage motorcycle. When you put on the larger freewheel here with the larger uh, low gear, there's a chance that your derailleur is going to actually be too close to the gear itself. Um, this little screw right here, not, not the two down here on the derailleur but this one here actually backs this whole derailleur up and away from that gear just a little bit. So I'm gonna tighten that just a hair. If you screw it in, um, it makes the derailleur go further away from the freewheel. I can see that it's a little close right now. That sounds fine. So we're in good shape there. Oh, this front suspension is nice. That's oh, awesome. What a difference. Huge suspension and just silky smooth. Very cool. I like it. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, this was a good way to spend a snowy day here. So. I've got a few more changes that I want to make to this bike. Uh, I may do a video on it. I may not. These videos take a really long time to shoot. So um, you may just see my future changes on this bike in future videos. 
Uh, if so, just comment and I'll tell you uh, what else I did to this. So, hey, uh, thanks. Appreciate you watching and see you on the next one.